Hello everyone. So, today we are going to start a new unit in which we will learn few numerical methods to solve nonlinear equations. So, first of all, what is a nonlinear equation? So, one of the most frequent problem in real life and engineering is to find the roots of a nonlinear equation f x equals to 0. The equation is nonlinear due to the nonlinearity of the function f. Here, a function is said to be nonlinear if the variables or variable has an exponent either greater than 1 or less than 1, but never 1. Or if you are having an equation having more than one variable, you are having the cross product terms of the variables in the equation. If we take some example of nonlinear equation or nonlinear function, here x square plus x plus 1 equals to 0. So, here this equation is a nonlinear equation and it is because this particular term is having exponent as 2. Similarly, if I am having some other function, let us say x plus root x, then again it is a nonlinear equation because here the exponent is 1 by 2 of this particular x in this particular term. So, in a nonlinear equation, if any of the term is having exponent less than 1 or greater than 1, but not exactly 1, then the equation is called nonlinear equation. If you are having an equation is mo in more than one variables, let us say f is a function of x and y, where x and y are independent variables. So, if I am having this function as x y equals to 0. So, here you can see this term is linear, this term is linear, but here we are having separately x and y having exponent 1, but if we take their product, this particular function becomes non-linear. So, in next few lectures, we will learn how to solve these nonlinear equations. Now, what we mean by the solution of a nonlinear equation? So, given a nonlinear function f, we seek a value of x for which f is 0. Such a, f, a solution value for x is called a root of the equation and a 0 of the function f. An example of a nonlinear equation in one variable, if you take f equals to x square minus 4 sin x equals to 0, and if I see the graph of this function, it can be clearly seen that the function is 0 when x is 0, and another point when x is near to 1.9. So, hence this particular equation is having two roots, one is 0, another one is just near to 1.9. So, graphically we can say the solution of a nonlinear equation means we have to find a curve of nonlinear function and we need to see where this particular curve is touching or intersecting x axis. Like we had the system of linear equations in the previous unit. In this unit also we can have system of nonlinear equations. If we have more than one equations in more than one variables, then it is called a system of nonlinear equations. For example, if you take these two equations, that is first equation is x square plus y square equals to 1 and the second equation is x cube plus x square plus x y minus 1 equals to 0. So, here we are having two equations in two unknown and both the equations are nonlinear in x as well as in y. So, we will learn in the last lecture of this unit that how to solve such a system using some numerical technique.
apart uh, as you seen all these examples which I have given to you are basically algebraic functions. Algebraic functions means they are the polynomials in x or in y. Apart from that we are having another type of nonlinear equation or nonlinear functions those are called transcendental function. So, a function which is not algebraic is a transcendental function they are also referred as non-algebraic non functions. For example, if you are having trigonometric term in your function exponential term logarithmic term or their combinations. For example, if you see this equation f x equals to x square plus 10 x here this is a trigonometric term in x and hence it is a transcendental function. So, we will learn how to solve or how to find the zeros of such transcendental functions using numerical techniques. Now, given a nonlinear equation we can have multiple roots. For example, if you take a nonlinear equation f x equals to 0, if it is a linear equation then it will be having one root, but if it is a quadratic equation means it is a second degree polynomial in x it will have two roots. If it is a cubic polynomial in x then the equation will be having three roots and so on. It the uh, roots may further be distinct or repeated for example, if you take a simple function x square minus 4 equals to 0. So, basically this part a quadratic polynomial is having two roots x equals to plus 2 and minus 2 and both the roots are distinct. But on the same time if you take another function let us say x square plus 4 minus 4 x basically x minus 2 whole square then the roots are 2 and 2 and hence the two roots but both are uh, same. So, roots are repeated twice. In case, in case of transcendental equation, if we consider an example like twice of sin x minus 1 equals to 0, then if we find a solution of this, it will be something like x equals to sin inverse 1 by 2 and it is coming out pi upon 6 plus minus twice n pi where n equals to 0 1 2. So, you can see that this equation has many roots corresponding to the different values of n. So, using numerical techniques we can find a single root given in a particular interval or more than one roots. For this we are having two types of techniques as I told you one is analytical methods or direct methods like in case of linear equations and the other one is numerical methods. So, direct methods can solve system in finite number of steps and gives an accurate solution. However, there are system of equations which are very time consuming when solving with direct methods or there are number of equations which you cannot solve using the direct method. Hence, we need to re rely on the numerical methods to find out a solution of such equations those are not solvable using direct method. So, numerical methods provide a technique to find an approximate but accurate solution to the system of equations. So, in the next few lectures we are going to discuss following numerical techniques like bisection method which we will cover in this lecture itself, then in our next lecture we will take second method and regular falsi method, then in the third lecture of this unit we will go for Newton Epson method, in the fourth lecture of this unit we will discuss about fixed point method and in the last lecture of this unit we will learn how can we solve system of nonlinear equations using these techniques. So, what we mean by numerical solution of a nonlinear equation? So, 
given a nonlinear equation f x equals to 0 numerical solution means a point we need to find out an approximate x star such that f x star is approximately 0. For this we always assume that f is continuously differentiable and real valued function. Also it is assumed that root of this particular equation f x equals to 0 are isolated. What we mean by isolated root? The root of f x equals to 0 for which there is a neighborhood which do not have any other root of 1 is said to be isolated root. For example, if you take f x equals to x square minus 4 equals to 0 again. So, here we are having two roots one is x equals to minus 2 another one is x equals to 2. So, both the roots are isolated because in the neighborhood, neighborhoods of 2 as well as neighborhood of minus 2 we do not have any other root. To find out such isolated roots, the main idea consists of the following steps in any numerical technique. First of all, we need an initial guess that is take a point x naught belongs to a close interval a b as an approximation to the root of f x equals to 0 and then we need to improve this initial root or initial solution by using an iterative equation that is x of n plus 1 equals to t of x n, n equals to 0, 1, 2 and so on. Here t is a real valued function called an iteration function. In the process of iterating a solution, we obtain a sequence of, of numbers x n which are expected to converge to the root of f x equals to 0 like here we will start with x naught then using this particular equation iterative equation we will find out x 1 then using x 1 here we will find x 2 and so on. Now in the previous slide I told you that uh, we obtained a sequence of numbers x n which are expected to converge to the root of f x equals to 0. Now what we mean by convergence of such an iterative scheme? A sequence of iterates x n is said to converge with order p and p will be always greater than equals to 1 to a point x star if x n plus 1 that is the approximate in n plus 1 iteration minus x star that is the approximate solution less than equals to c x n minus x star raised to power p for some constant c greater than greater than 0. So, if p equals to 1 the sequence is said to converge linearly if p equals to 2 we will say that the sequence is converging quadratically and so on. So, the first numerical technique which we are going to discuss is bisection method the method is based on intermediate value theorem. So, what this theorem tells us that if f is continuous in a close interval a to b and k is any number between f a and f b then there exist a c belongs to open interval a b such that f c equals to k. So, if you see this graphics here we are having x on the horizontal axis f x on the vertical axis and this blue curve is showing the graph of f x between a and b. Now, if I take a number k between f a and f b, so there will be some number c such that image of c under this function f equals to k. It means if we are having a function f x which is continuous on given interval a b, the function f satisfy the property f a f into f b less than 0 with f a not equals to 0 and f b not equals to 0 that a and b are not root of f. Then by intermediate value theorem we can see there exists a c or a root between a and b such that f c equals to 0. This procedure will also work if there exist more than one root in the interval a b. Here we assume that roots in a b is unique 
just for simplicity. This method calls for repeated bisection or sub intervals of AP with locating the half containing P at each step. So, geometrically how this method will work let me explain here. So, suppose we are having a function like this. So, this is the point A, this is point B. Now, as you can see this function is having a root at this particular point. So, what I will see that this point is A F A and this point is B A B. So, what you can see F A is a negative value while F B is a positive value. So, it means F A into F B means there is a root between A and B. Now, what I will do? I will calculate C 1 which will be midpoint of A and B. So, if I take the midpoint this interval A and B midpoint will be somewhere here. So, let us say this is my C 1. Now, if I check f of c 1 and if it is equals to 0, I will say that c 1 is a root of the equation. If it is not 0, what I will check? I will check f a into f c 1. So, product of these two, if this product is negative, the root will lie between a and c 1. If it is positive, the root will lie in the right half interval that is C 1 to B. Like in this example, root is here. So, what I will do? I will update this as A and again this will become B. So, what will happen in the next iteration where the length of the interval was B minus A? In the first iteration, it reduced to b minus a upon 2. Now, again I will find out the midpoint of these two. So, let us say this one c 2. So, c 2 will be somewhere here and again I will check f a into f c 2 which is coming positive here. It means root is in the right half interval that is in this interval. So, what I will do? I will name it as A and this as B. So, it means and then I will find out midpoint of this which will be somewhere here and continuing this process I my method will converge to the root which is given here as P let us say or X star. So, this is the uh, geometric explanation of the bisection method in each iteration we reduce the half of our search interval and then we will find out root by repeating this half and half and half like this. So, the algorithm for bisection method can be described in the following steps. The first step is given an initial interval a node b naught set n equals to 0. In step 2, define c n plus 1 equals to a n plus b n upon 2, like we are finding the midpoint of the original interval. If f of a n into f of c n plus 1 equals to 0, then the root is c n plus 1 if it is the product of f of a n with f of c n plus 1 is negative, then we take root as means root will lie in the interval a n plus 1 and b n plus 1 where n plus 1 is a n 
and B n plus 1 is C n plus 1. Similarly, if this product is positive, then take n plus 1 equals to C n plus 1 and B n plus 1 equals to B n means the root will lie in the first half of the interval and so on. Step 4, if the root is not achieving step 3, then find the length of new radius interval n plus 1 B n plus 1. If the length of the interval B n plus 1 minus n plus 1 less than a threshold epsilon, then take the midpoint of this interval as the root. Otherwise, go to step 2 for the next iterations. So, this is the same which I have described on the board graphically how bisection method works. Now, if we talk about the convergence of this particular method, let A naught B naught equals to A B be the initial interval with F A into F B less than 0 that is negative. Define the approximate root as X n which is the midpoint of n minus 1 plus B n minus 1 upon 2. Then there exists a root X star A B such that X n minus X star less than equals to 1 by 2 raised to power n into b minus a where b and a to b is the original interval. Moreover, to achieve the accuracy, if it is given that the accuracy should be of order epsilon, where epsilon is a small positive number, it is sufficient to take b minus a raised to power b minus a upon 2 raised to power n less than equals to epsilon because we need this number less than equals to epsilon for getting the desired accuracy in our numerical solution. So, it is less than equals to epsilon. It means if we take the logarithm, I can write it n should be greater than equals to log b minus a minus log epsilon upon log 2. So, this particular equation tells us about the number of iterations required to get a given accuracy epsilon. For example, consider this function x cube plus cos x plus 1 and this equation equals to 0. Let the length of the initial interval is 1 that is b minus a is 1. If the permissible absolute error is 0 0.125 that is x n minus x star less than equals to 0 0.125, then the minimum number of iterations required to be carried out using the earlier formula. So, it will become n greater than equals to log of b minus a minus log epsilon upon log 2. So, log 1 minus log 0 0.125 upon log 2 and it is 3. So, you need at least 3 iterations to get the accuracy of the order 0 0.125. Now, we will take an example and we will see how we can solve this particular example using the bisection method. So, example is a nonlinear equation and we will follow the steps of bisection method to get the solution. So, let I need a nonlinear equation f x equals to 0 where f x is given by x square minus x minus 3. Now, I need to find out root of this. So, if I check f 1, f 1 comes out to be 1 minus 1 minus 3 as minus 3 and if I check f 2, f 2 will be negative. If I check f 3, f 3 will become positive that is 3 into 3 9 minus 3 minus 3. So, it is positive. As we can see that product of f 1 into f 3 is minus 9 which is a negative number. It means the root of this particular equation f x equals to 0 where f x is given by this function is lie between 1 and 3. So, what I will do? In the first iteration, I will set a 0 equals to 1 
B0 H3 f of a 0 h minus 3 f of b 0 h 3. Now, I will find out c 1, c 1 comes out to be the middle point of a naught and b naught. So, it will be 3 plus 1 upon 2, so which is 2. Now, I will check f 2. f 2 is 4 minus 2 minus 3. So, it is minus 1. So, check here if I take the product of f 1 into f 2, it is coming out a positive number. Hence, the root lies between 2 to 3, not from 1 to 2. So, it means my a 1 becomes 2, b 1 becomes 3, f a 1 is minus 1, f of b 1 is 3. So, if I need to find out an accuracy up to order of the order 10 raised to power minus 3, then the iterations will go like this. In the 11th iterations, I will get a n as 2.3027, b n as 2.3037, x n is 2.3032 and the value of f x f at this particular number is 0 0.0016. If I check this x n minus x n minus 1, in the difference between two consecutive iterations, it is coming out to be 0 0.0005 and hence in the 11th iteration, the absolute error is less than 0 0.001, which is permissible error and the root is accurate to third decimal place. Thus, the root of the equation is 2.303. We are having some advantage when we are using the bisection method as well as some disadvantage. Advantage like this method is very easy to understand. It always converts to a solution. That is why it is often used as a starter for other more efficient numerical techniques. The disadvantages are this method is relatively slow to converge. Actually, you can see if I am having x n plus 1 minus x star. So, that is the error in n iteration hence e n plus 1 plus then equals to 1 by 2 e n so, if I check with the convergence formula, you can see if I take c equals to a half. So, this method is having exactly linear convergence and hence this method is quite slow to converge. Moreover, if you choose a guess close to the root, may result in requiring many iterations to converge. So, in this lecture, we have learned about bisection method. In the next lecture, we will learn two other methods, those are quite close to bisection methods in the same category, iterations updates in the same manner. However, they are having better convergence when compared to the bisection method. Thank you.